Welcome back to a Thursday episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On today's episode, I want to talk to you about what you do if your snake won't eat. Stick around. A lot of times, snakes just stop eating for no reason, apparently. And with some snakes, this can be kind of um, foreseen or forecasted ball pythons a lot of the time through the winter will go on a hunger strike hog noses are notoriously difficult to get to eat when they're babies so let's just go through a couple of things that you might want to consider if your snake isn't eating properly first thing make sure your husbandry is on point if by chance the temperature is off they're, they don't feel comfortable in their enclosure they don't have the right hide uh, so that they feel like they can be hidden they're probably not going to eat because they're stressed. So you want to make sure that your heat is good. That's the one main thing for sure. Uh, humidity levels are important with this as well. They have a hide on either side so that they can feel comfortable no matter where they are in the enclosure. And then the enclosure is in a place that is conductive to that species as well. You want to make sure that their husbandry is perfect. And once you've done that, well, you can move on to the next step. Another major problem is a lot of the times when you get a snake and it won't eat, but the breeder told you that it was eating, that doesn't mean that they were lying to you. It could be that they were feeding something different. For example, a lot of the times, if you're raising a snake like a corn snake or even a ball python, some breeders will start them on mice. This is especially common in the case of the corn snake, where if they start them on mice and you try to transition them to rats, that snake might not associate a rat with food because it smells much different than a mouse. This can go for all different species, and this is especially difficult with species like vine snakes or eastern hognose, garter snakes, things that generally in the wild wouldn't eat rodents. If you're trying to get them switched onto rodents, you might have to scent them. We're going to talk about that in a second. So what you could try is feeding them rats, feeding them mice, feeding them African soft furs. Basically, well, I guess what you really should do to begin with is ask the breeder what were they feeding them in the first place. Now before scenting any animal, I would suggest doing the Ziploc method is what someone called it for me. Basically what you do is you stick the snake in a small container. Um, if it's a baby snake, a deli cut works really great. If it's a larger snake, like you're going to see here, um, it barely fits. This is uh, Ekans, the full grown hognose snake. She barely fits under this six quart uh, tub. So I would put her in here with the rodent. Uh, frozen thought is how I always try first and then put a lid on it, keep it in the dark, and you're basically giving them no choice. They're gonna ignore it all night while they're touching it, basically, or they're gonna go ahead and they're going to eat the rodents or whatever the prey item is that you're feeding. I would like to mention too that I always suggest frozen thawed feeders. If you have to feed live, that's one thing. Supervise your animal because injuries can definitely happen. I had a ball python that had a wound on its head for six months because he only ate live and that rat did bite him. It wasn't grave, he didn't die, but at the same time it can be very dangerous. Frozen thawed is definitely the way to go, especially when you're feeding adult size feeders. So if the Ziploc method doesn't work, there's a few other things that you can try as well. One of my favorite things to do, especially with hognose snakes, which although westerns in the wild will eat rodents, uh, a lot of them will eat amphibians, they're toad eaters. So what you can do is you can get yourself a toad and scent the animal with that, especially if you're it's a baby hognose snake uh, or any animal that likes to eat something other than rodents. And you, whatever it is that they eat in the wild, you get one of those captive bred, preferably, so you're not catching something in the wild and introducing something to your animals that's not native to them, um, something you definitely don't want in your collection. And you rub the pinky mouse or the mouse on whatever it is, the toad, um, another thing that you can do, for example, too, I, I'm going to use hognose, western hognose for an example. I tried everything. I went and I got different types of fish from the pet store. Um, I caught a toad, not recommended. Get a captive red toad if you can. Um, and another thing, too, that I never thought about, tuna. I would just drain a couple cans of tuna, the water, um, into uh, another bowl, and I would soak some pinky mics in the tuna juice, and it actually worked. That's how I got some of my very finicky eaters, my hognose snakes, to eat when they were babies. Another thing that works really well too with hognose snakes is scrambled eggs. It seems really weird. 
Scramble them in a very clean pan, obviously, and do not put salt or pepper or any seasoning on it whatsoever. And just fry up an egg and try to get a little bit of the white and also the yolk and try to feed it to your western hognose snake. You'd be shocked. Sometimes this actually works. There are a few other methods as well, um, but let's suppose that you've tried everything. You've gone through weeks and weeks of trying to feed your animal and now let's suppose it's been to the point where your animal is starting to lose weight. Let's talk about that. If your animal isn't losing much weight at all, it's still remaining at a healthy weight, you've got nothing to worry about. Once the animal is losing a considerable amount of weight in comparison to its overall body weight, now you've got a problem. I would suggest up front, go see a vet, figure it out. But let's suppose that you live in a place like Canada where it's $350 to walk in the door at a vet. Go see someone at a reptile shop. Ask them if you can bring a snake in or if they can come to you. Don't just go bring your reptiles into reptile shops because if they're reputable, if they're worth their salt, they don't want you bring something in that might infect their animals with something that you might have in your collection. They don't know you, or even if they do, they don't want a random animal coming to their shop. So clear it with the owner first. They're gonna be able to help you likely. This is what saved me. Uh, I knew a guy who owned a reptile shop and he helped me what's called assist feeding. Now assist feeding and forced feeding are completely separate things. Assist feeding is when you take the animal and you pry its mouth open with either a tool or your finger or your hand, just the way you position the jaw, and you try to force a rodent or whatever the feeder item is inside of its mouth, and you try to get so that it starts taking the item. What you can do if they do take it, fantastic. Supervise, make sure they don't regurgitate it, uh, and then you can even choo-choo train another one in there if they're really losing weight and you really want them to eat a larger meal. If this works and they've taken this animal, make sure that you leave them alone. Do not bug them. Make sure there's it's a stress-free environment. The husbandry is fine. And maybe turn off the lights as well in the reptile area, their tank, their the room, whatever it is. Give them no reason to regurgitate. And then check in the morning. If they regurgitated, time to go see a vet. Something might be wrong. Same thing with their poops. This is for the beginning uh, with the husbandry, husbandry thing. Check to see if they're, they have any issues with their poops. Parasites are not something you should think of immediately. Uh, it's kind of rare. There's a lot of other things it could be as well, but keep an eye out for weird poops because that could mean that there is an actual sickness in your animal. Force feeding is basically when you jam an entire feeder animal down the throat of the snake. And one uh, way that I really do like to do this that I think is more humane is to actually grind it up and put it into a syringe and get it right down into the animal's stomach. This is something that I wouldn't suggest doing unless you really really know what you're doing. You can really damage, really injure your animal, animal like this. Um, I know a guy who knows what he's doing. I've never had to, to do this before, but I've seen it done. Basically, there's syringes that you can buy that are actually made for pinkies, uh, pinky mice, and you stick the pinky in there, and it basically just liquefies it, and you, you squeeze it right into the snake's stomach. This is like a last-ditch effort, in my opinion. I'd go see a vet before I do this. Um, it, it's just something that you really don't want to do, but that is basically the end of the cycle before 100% you have to go see a vet. I'd like to mention too, just because your animal isn't eating and you try all these things, as long as they're not losing weight, that's the big takeaway from this. If they're not losing a ton of weight and they're not looking sick, they don't have like a ridge spine, anything like that, it doesn't mean that they're unhealthy. Uh, go Herping is another great channel. Um, Alex has a ton of interesting advice really great advice actually and he had a snake that wasn't eating for over a year he succumbed to the hate on the internet and he took his snake to a vet and he proved everybody that just because his snake hadn't eaten for a year it wasn't sick and this is just the best example i might even link this video in the description um just because your animal isn't eating doesn't mean it's not it's sick snakes in the wild go over a year a lot of the time without having a meal so I want to hear from you. What did I miss? If a snake isn't eating, what advice can you give to other keepers who are really struggling with this? This can be very stressful to a keeper who, even if you're experienced, especially if you're not, but even if you are experienced, this could be very stressful. I know I felt very stressed out bringing home a very expensive new western hognose snake and the thing wouldn't eat. So if you have any advice, put it in the comment section below. And of course, next week, what should I talk about? Put that in the comment section below too. I love taking the ideas for the videos from the people who actually watch these videos. And I want to say thank you. 
This week, we're probably going to hit almost 250 subscribers. Thank you very much. I appreciate the love and support. This has been this Thursday's episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. We do new videos every Monday and every Thursday. Please do subscribe. And that means I'm going to see you on Monday. <laughs>